Yes, yes, Sajid. Uh, I think uh, yeah, we are good to start. I got your profile from HR. Okay, so this this uh, opening right, we are seeking for a candidate who has a great exposure with uh, uh, AWS uh, as well as uh, DevOps. Okay, I think you know the background of this. Uh, I think uh, can you please tell me about yourself and your background and your technical exposure? Uh, yes, sure. So to start with, like I have total around fifteen years of IT experience. Into AWS Dev, uh, DevOps, I have close to like five years of experience. So prior to that, I was mainly working on like uh, um, on data warehouse, uh, ETL Informatica, Cognos, and BI tools. So uh, after that, I started with uh, first AWS Cloud. I worked on like uh, some few services of AWS, and slowly I got a chance to work on like DevOps tools uh, like Jenkins, Terraform, Kubernetes, Docker, uh, all the like uh, tools I have covered in, in DevOps. So maybe uh, and like I have set, uh, like done the setup of uh, infrastructure in Dev, QA and production uh, along with maintaining with, like high availability and uh, reliability. So that is my overall IT experience. Okay, yes. that's good, Ajit. Since you said you have a close to 15 years experience, right? That's really good. So in that case, I should ask some questions to you on architect, cloud architect or cloud consultant role basis, okay? So fine. Yes. Let me start from AWS. So can you please tell me about your AWS architecture end-to-end? -end? Mm, I mean, I wanted to know uh, how you are, you know, understand your infrastructure end-to-end. -end from monitoring, from security, from networking, and uh, compute resources, storage, database, and uh, billing, cost optimization, yes. everything. Yes, I like, uh, I have worked on like all the pillars of uh, whole architect uh, AWS uh, uh, framework. Like, uh, mm, suppose we start with like security. So considering the security, uh, we have to like, uh, Secure our uh, perimeter first. So no, uh, first we have the uh, like AWS WAP to secure our AWS VPC. Then comes uh, uh, knuckle and inside uh, for subnet level, and uh, on instance level we have the uh, security groups. And for user level we have like uh, implemented the uh, you are using IAM role. And along with AWS organize, uh, organization to manage, uh, centrally manage our uh, users. So uh, that is part of like security. And uh, while coming into uh, performance, uh, uh, like com for compute, uh, easy to uh, all the like uh, easy to instance, we considering the easy to instance currently, we are moved from uh, like. Uh, uh, on demand uh, to savings plan, which is like uh, uh, which saves our cost as well as the uh, performance. Uh, because on demand, I think we can use in a single availability zone, and uh, savings plan we can uh, um, like use in uh, across the globe. Uh, so, considering the volume. Uh, we have uh, like uh, from GP2 to GP3 that gives like uh, higher uh, like higher pace and throughput. So it actually matches according to our uh, requirement. So in in our production level, we are maintaining the uh, EC2 instance like combination of uh, R series, C series, and N series. So R series uh, mainly on like uh, uh, on the storage. C, uh, C series for compute optimization and for general purpose. So it, it matches all our requirements. And coming to like reliability, uh, we have uh, like uh, like uh, multiple like uh, we are maintaining the uh, for high availability we are maintaining the different availability zone. And for disaster recovery we have like backup script of uh, like Terraform, and um, to keep the monitoring, uh, we are using like uh, 
AWS Cloud Apps, uh, along with Prometheus and Grafana. And for logging and uh, logging purpose uh, for application logs, we are using ELK. Okay, Ajit, I think uh, that's good. I think uh, so. Fine, we can move on to the next question. So, since you have you know telling more about uh, DR, uh, can you please explain me your current DR setup and uh, how it will work? What is the trigger point for your DR? DR? Uh, basically, uh, uh, like DR script, I have given uh, like any uh, support for any reason. The uh, whole uh, infrastructure goes down. Uh, we have uh, uh, for three DAR architecture, we are maintaining the Terraform script. So, like within le less time, we can provision all the infrastructure. And uh, uh, we have some uh, uh, like uh, considering the whole architecture framework, uh, we have kept uh, like one uh, backup of all our servers and database. So we are maintaining the um, backups of, of the servers. Uh, we are taking like hourly backup of all, all our hard disk MySQL and taking uh, the backup of uh, our EC2 instance as AMI. So that is the DR uh, strategy. Okay, what is the RPO and what is the RPO uh, current year, in your current project uh, DR strategy? RPO. RTO, restore time objective and restore point objective, I'm asking. What is the duration okay. about uh, about your customers and your CSLA? Uh, like, uh, RTO, we are kept like, uh, like for critical level is one hour and uh, for medium level is like, uh, Eight hours, so that is the time term. And RPO we have given like uh, a twenty percent uh, loss is fine now. So twenty percent loss of data. Okay. Uh, so could you please? Uh, yeah, we can move on to next question. Could you please tell me, uh, like, uh, what is the uh, centralized log management tool you are using in your current system? And can you tell me why you are strict into that specific tool? Yes. Uh, earlier, uh, we are using uh, AWS Cloud Edge. Uh, so since uh, like it's specific to only AWS, so uh, uh, we move to ELK. So that is the centralized ma management of logs. So we are monitoring the, uh, all the application log there, uh, as well as some of these uh, like SIM tool and APMs. We are uh, like monitoring through ELK. Um, we have uh, three components in ELK, like Logstars, uh, Elasticsearch, and Kiwana. In Kiwana, we have the APM options uh, is there, application performance monitoring. And some, uh, like any anyone accessing our uh, uh, like applications, so what is the URL they are trying to pin? Those details we are uh, monitoring through SIM tool security incidents even management tool okay and for log application log management we have the, we have installed uh, the logstars logstars uh, actually uh, collects all these uh, all these okay. two instances Okay, fine, Jajit. I got the overall uh, point. Okay, about your centralized log management system. So coming to the uh, AWS, Lambda. I'll ask you my next question. See, uh, I have uh, there are around uh, uh, my customer having there are around ten production AWS account and ten uh, development AWS account. All all twenty accounts are individual. I have a centralized Lambda function. Okay, in my master account, we can say. So what this Lambda will do, it will go through all the 20 plus accounts. It will bring some, you know, some report kind of thing. Monthly once the Lambda will trigger. Suddenly yeah. what happened, my Lambda stopped working, says Lambda timed out error. So in yeah. this case, so how we will troubleshoot this issue and what could be the reason when Lambda giving timed out error? You know, any you have experienced such issue and what would be the solution for that? You can propose. Uh, exact issue I cannot tell, but... Uh... Lambda has some limitations up to like 15 minutes, it can uh, like, uh, trigger. So, that if that time frame within that time frame, 
uh, it cannot fit, then that may be the one of the reason. Very good. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's good, actually. Okay. So, say for something, my clients, right, there is another scenario. My client more and more, you know, interested in cost saving in my current infrastructure. So they are yes. giving me, you know, environment. They are asking as an architect, my client asking me, asking you to analyze and go yes. through that present infrastructure and which are the possible way we can save some money on monthly billing. So what are the area you will look into it as a cloud architect? What is your suggestion will be? Okay. Uh, we are using like AWS Compute Optimizer. So it will give the suggestion uh, to use this uh, instance uh, instead of this. So uh, that is uh, one of these uh, techniques we can analyze. And coming to some specific area of uh, whatever we have implemented is uh, like uh, GP2 and GP3 uh, storage. So GP3 is like cheaper and also so for production level we are using and uh, it's fine for us it saves some costs and also in production level 20 percent of our uh, instances we can uh, for stateless application we can uh, implement uh, uh, the spot instance okay and uh, yes and one more scenario is like uh, logs we can uh, man, uh, like archive using S3 life, life cycle rules uh, to S3 glacier. So that is one, one more technique. So these three I can uh, recall right now. Okay, that's good actually. Fine. <clears throat> so could you tell me in our current uh, you know, customer infrastructure uh, at present uh, initial day, right, we've had you know, five to 10 uh, EC2 instances. That time we have taken a patching uh, manually, okay. But today, uh, after you know long days, uh, my environment had you know 100, 200 instances. So could you please suggest me the best way to patch all my instances, security update, everything, and what would be your recommendation? And can you differentiate multiple tools and uh, uh, which one is best for our approach? Uh, yes, uh, like we, I have only exposure into um, like actual tool for patch management. So that is the uh, best tool uh, I can tell uh, for patching. Uh, I don't have any exposure to chip and puppet. Okay. Okay, fine. Then we can ignore this question. Sir. So prior to DevOps point of view, I'll ask some questions from Kubernetes. Can you tell me your current architecture of your Kubernetes uh, cluster? Uh, how you are managing? Uh, how how how, archi how you are architecting this uh, Kubernetes arch present architecture? Can you explain? Uh, yes. Uh, like uh, while setting up the uh, infrastructure in Dev and QA uh, means we can use like ekctl command to uh, provision uh, the eks cluster. But production we have like more than hundred of uh, nodes, so um, we are maintaining it uh, and uh, provisioning the cluster through Terraform. And uh, suppose we are we have one uh, Java application to move into like for deployment purpose we have to move it into uh, EKS cluster. So we'll see like uh, we'll discuss with the development team like they will provide the details of the port number and the, uh, Docker file all the details will get it uh, and Docker file. As part of CI/CD process, we'll move it to like uh, push it to AWS ECR, uh, and, and CI/CD tool uh, as part of CI/CD process from AWS ECR, it will go and deploy into class. So we are maintaining the different namespaces uh, that is uh, uh, for secure security purpose as well as uh, uh, like space allocation means. For day one, we are maintaining only 10, 10 to 15 percent, and rest all for the production. Okay. okay. That's good. Yeah. So, 
So can you tell me, like uh, when we have a, you know, uh, implementation, my customer, right, uh, suggesting me to done this automation through uh, Python Boto 3. Okay. Yes. So what level of experience you have with Python Boto 3 and what are the automation you have done through Python Boto 3? Can you please elaborate about your experience? Uh, yes. Like Boto 3, we have in implemented in one of the scenario I can recall. Uh, like... Uh, we have uh, some IM, IM users, so any IM not active more than like 90 days, we want to deactivate the user, okay? So for that, we have used like uh, AWS Boto3 SDK and uh, using that, we have implemented the script. Uh, and uh, we, we have used like uh, some of these uh, modules like system module, date modules, and all. So we'll get all the user IDs uh, and calculate the current date till last active date. So, and uh, that calculation we we'll do using the for loop and all. Uh, then we we'll, there are some uh, exception block in our code also. Uh, so using that uh, bottom three script, we have uh, implemented this. Uh, uh, this use case and another use case also we have implemented for this backup early backup to um, for other region okay that's good so so ajit can you please uh, elaborate when you are doing such automations in your environment what is the recent issue you faced or you have existing automation in your system what is the recent problem you have faced where customer identified and uh, you know, asked you about RCA? What is the recent RCA you have provided for that? Can you please explain about the RCA and the conversation between you and your customer? Uh, like, this is one of the scenario. Like, uh, they asked, like, why so many users are there? They want to see that uh, quarterly report, like, how many users are accessing. Uh, I mean, what type, what level of access we have? Um, why this must be, like this many users are there, and why uh, uh, they are not active? So this kind of uh, uh, concerns uh, client raised. So for that only we had uh, done that automation using um, Boto three, and uh, we currently we are uh, implementing that in our production level. So, so client is happy now uh, with that implementation. Okay. All right, uh, Ajit. So I think I've done with my part. Okay. So what I'll do, I'll just convey the feedback to HR and they'll get back to you. Okay. Fine. Thanks for okay. your time, basically. All right. Yeah. Thank you.